Hello, me again. Oh, big, big trouble at the bus stop. So I've just got off that bus from where my car is, that way, today. Uh, and that bus took a while. But all those people are queuing for the bus that goes the other way. Um, up yonder, probably yonder, Lime Regis and wherever it is I came from last time. Charmouth, I think so, yeah. But the bus hasn't showed up. So I've just gone off this one, and the one they're all waiting for is going the other way. Hasn't shown up at all. And two weeks ago, I was here, and that very same bus going that way as well didn't show up either. There's uh, all is not well with Wessex buses. Sounds like staff shortages or just <laughs> willful disobedience and uh, dissent. Who knows? But fortunately, the one I was waiting for showed up because I'm going that way generally. So ah, right. Anyway, intro, intro. Enough about uh, local bus route disputes. Uh, it is Sunday, the 12th of September. Uh, it is. 11.27. I've missed a week because I was at a friend's barbecue that Sunday instead. <laughs> it's not all hike, hike, hike. Um, there we are at West Bay again. So today's plan is uh, about 10 miles that way to Abbotsbury, which marks the western end of Chesil Beach, which we shall see a lot more of as we go. I'm anticipating today is a much uh, easier day. Just, you know, having a look at the terrain from the bus on the way here and on the maps and stuff, it looks like it's basically quite flat, gentle downhill all the way to the car park where my car is. So a lot of hugging the beach today, a lot of following the actual beach as well. I think the cliffs sort of peter out a bit here. They don't really pick up again until we hit to Portland on the end, but we'll see more of that as we go. Anyway, enough gobbing about here and uh, ice cream temptation. I'm going to make some strides up that first hill and we'll see what's what. I'll get the map out, we'll do the usual thing. It's a day trip again today, um, which I'm quite liking to be honest. I'm liking being not, not hobbling about for a week after I finish my holidays. Anyway, more about that as we go as well, I'm sure. Speak to you soon. Slow pan, slow pan. Yeah, professional photography. <sighs> not sure doing this once a fortnight. I'd have to build my core fitness to be honest. <sighs> Yeah. And I was doing a whole week at a time. I did feel like I was noticeably getting fitter by the end of each week. Still, there you go. West Bay from the uh, Eastern Cliff. Did all that yesterday. That big beacon thing, gold cap, was it? Something like that. The actual beacon beacon on there as well. Ah. And looking ahead, I think this is as high as it gets today, this whole day, so that may be the only hill I've had to climb unless it goes down and up a little bit on the way. But yeah, it's definitely sloping downwards consistently. Ah. Ah. Walk for a bit and get some uh, maps out and things. Ah. Yeah, a uh, carton. Tomb of the Unknown Absailer. I don't know. Oh, paddle border down there. Can we just see that? Yeah, there he is. You see how loose and scrabbly this stuff is. I'm trying to keep a reasonable distance from the edge. Not solid like the stuff in Cornwall. And Devon. All a bit, uh, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We're going to be going along on top of this. There's a little bit of up and down by the looks of it. Somewhere called Burton Bradstock, I think, is our next thing, two miles away. There's obviously a way down there. Lots of people on that beach. A car park nearby. I think it's all, shank, all stony shingle. There might be a bit of sand there. Hard to tell. Take what you can get along this stretch of the coast, sand-wise. Oh, golf course. Ah, let's do the map thing. It's an exciting day. Exciting day for me, map-wise. Just hold that and sort this at the same time. Because here we are, Purbeck and South Dorset, OL15, Outdoor Leisure Series rather than the normal series. That suggests there's actually some interesting stuff in this region. That's Durdle Door, a picture of. I imagine we will pass that, but that's the other side of Weymouth and Portland, all sort of beyond, beyond the horizon. We will see that though, I'm pointless unless it collapses before we get there. <laughs> and here we are, this is the last map. So we are basically just coming onto the edge of it, just south of Bridport there, right now. Albert Spree is where we're heading today. But you carry on and on and on and on, and eventually... 
Ta da! Pool Harbour. The chain ferry across the mouth of Pool Harbour, where it goes across to Sandbanks and Bournemouth, also marks the end of the southwest coast path. So, this is everything left to do for this entire trip. The entire project, in fact. And we're going to get to Abbotsbury today, so I'd estimate going at my current rate one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven more days, which admittedly is not the original six day push that I would all normally be doing this time of year. But what with all the buses and car journeys and stuff, it's going to be shorter stages and more of them, but we'll definitely get it done this year. Don't know, the rate I'm going, let's say every if I'm missing on average one Sunday every month, that's three per month. Probably be there November time. We'll see. It's not enough hands. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, I still bring these maps along as a kind of talisman more than anything else. It's very rare I actually reference them for navigational purposes anymore. Just the signage on the southwest coast path is that good. It's very hard to get lost. Mostly in towns, that's where you get lost, and then the maps are at such a scale that they don't really help in towns. You're more looking for sort of uh, black stickers with white acorns on lampposts. That's the sort of thing you need for that. Yeah, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of workout today, but nothing hugely strenuous, I don't think. After these next couple of cliffs, I think it probably is down to the flat section for the second half of the day. So yeah, good. It's a lovely day as well. So, I don't know what temperature it is. It said it was going to be high of 18 today, which probably it is around now. So it's you know, starting to cool off a bit, starting to revert more to more traditional normal temperatures for this time of year. But it's been very hot and humid in the last couple of weeks. <sighs> but yeah, it's a good day. I'm wearing one layer too many, but that's okay. <laughs> Sweating does me good. Purges. So yeah, I just have to navigate this golf course and then uh, see what we can see next. So yeah, I mean this time of year is kind of when I would normally be doing my September week, so either now or next week or the week after, so mid-September which it's coming up on now. The house move's still ongoing, any, time, any week now I hope I get a completion date but uh, till then I can't really afford to be just taking whole weeks out of, away from civilization because I need to be answering emails and returning documents and things quite quickly at present, so hence the day tripping. And of course, everyone's panicking to try and get in on the uh, September end of end of stamp duty holiday deadline. End of September. God, I've turned into one of those tedious people who worries about stamp duty and mortgages. That's not what anyone's watching this for. Ah, let's crack on a bit. Yeah, isn't that idyllic? I think that's Burton Braddock or something. Some holiday park down here. With uh, quite a shingly beach access, so that does look like there's some sort of sand right near on the uh, the foreshore. Hmm. I think like the golden sands we've seen in Cornwall. I got a lot more beaches to sample from. You see, I've seen pretty much all of the uh, all of the worthwhile visiting beaches in the southwest of England, <laughs> one way, one form or another. This is uh, yeah, it's quite quiet. I don't know if that's because it's off season now. Like I say, we're into. It's about two weeks into September now. Most of the, pretty much school's all gone back now. And uh, whatever ravaged post-COVID apocalypse we live in now. So yeah, this is just locals, I think mostly, or old retired type folks. Yeah, so that's an acceptable level of density of people on a beach, I think. Not like Lyme Regis, my God. That was terrifying. I'd still be able to see it from here, actually. Yeah, and that's Lyme Regis. Hard to make any detail out of this range, but there you go. Inching our way across the landscape day by day. <sighs> Good. Yeah, Portland in the distance there. I will do the optional Portland day, I've decided. That's a whole day going around the end of that and back. Worth a look. Interesting place. Lots of prisons on there and quarries, old quarries. A lot of Portland stone. I'm sure you have bang on about that later when I get there. They built much of much of London after the Great Fire. All the big public built impressive buildings are built with stone from there. I think. Yeah, alright, let's get down across and up. Whew. Ah, up and over. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the rest of the day. Look at that. So, gradual downhill, there's a little bit of a rise again in the middle distance, and then beyond that is essentially a great deal of following that flat beach. I think my car is just at the end, in that graph, that, that three bit on the end of the curve. Looks like the car park I parked next to. So, very leisurely day today. Probably done quite quickly, I suspect. I mean, I could just sit around a bit more. In fact, yes, why not? Let's park and ramble in a different way for a little while. What we got here? Some excellent dry stone walling there. Archetypal. Back down sufficiently off the path. Yeah, it's a deep. <coughs> good pitch in fact. Actually, this would be pretty pretty flipping ideal place to camp. I mean, there's a lot of light, a lot of houses there, but I wouldn't use torches. Yeah. It's a bit visible, but very good for wind exposure and sufficient distance from the cliff. That wall would block the prevailing. This would be a, and there'd be an amazing sight watching the sunset. Well the sunset would be behind me, but sunrise would be amazing here, I think. Still, no tent today. <sighs> yeah, look at that. Just gonna hold it still for a bit. Magnificent. Lots of people out and about. They're busy still, even with schools back in. Non non-child families out for a quiet break at the end of the season where it all calms down a bit. I imagine it's a bit cheaper this time of year to be booking places, hotels and whatnot. <sighs> Pricing all drops away. Yeah. Lovely. I think that's Burton Braddock, the village thereof. And I don't really know much about the rest of the places. We'll see when we find them. Yeah. Ah, back on the move again. So it turns out Michael Portello's been and gone. That thing I was banging on about last time, I saw it on telly. So from the look of it, it's the usual format, six episodes of stretches of the coast path. Which makes sense, frankly. I'm not sure how you'd fix a blow-by-blow a blow account of a 640-mile footpath into six half-hour episodes. <laughs> I have trouble with that, as you can tell. But um, yeah, usual format, you know, doing a bit of hiking, but mostly talking to a suspiciously dense number of random historians he keeps meeting along the path. I'm going to ask the next couple of people I meet if they know anything about the local history here, just as a science experiment. I think they might be fake. But um, he had all the gear, he was doing it. He was, uh, there were bits of him actually hiking. He's, um, yeah, it was stretches. The one I saw was uh, Widemouth Bay to um, Tintagel, which was like the, the easy half of the most difficult week I found of the trail. And then he did. Um, Gwynap Head round Le Mourne, Mousel, Newlyn, and Penzance and St Michael's Mount, which was probably one of the easiest day stages I had in the entire thing. But yeah, it looked like he was doing it in late winter. All the trees and branches and everything all looking quite like that light you get in the other part of the year. So fair play to him there. Obviously he wasn't camping. He had a better hat than I did. I know, hard to believe. But no, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I missed the first week. He must have been going out of mine head that week. There's a couple more weeks to go. I don't know where you find that. It was on Channel 5. They got their like, iPlayer, My 5 thing, on demand, whatever. But I guess by the time you watch this, it's probably might still be there. I don't know where you buy a DVD box set of that kind of thing, <laughs> whether it even gets a release. It is kind of, you know, evening time filler, generally, that, that kind of programme. I find it personally fascinating, but yeah. It's a fair play to him. It's a good, it's a good series. I think he does a better job of it than I do, certainly. Him and Kate Humble. <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between a TV programme about the coast path and a guy, some random internet stranger, videoing his hiking. Like, scripts and researchers and helicopter photography, all that. But I'm not bitter, it's fine. Different things. <laughs> no, I liked it. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of it, see where it gets to. But yeah, he's already been, he's already been and gone. It must have been this last February, just past, I think, because he was reflecting a great deal about Covid, as you do while hiking, as I do anyway. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it did look quite chilly, quite quite stormy North Atlantic on the uh, Bude section there, Tintagel, which is fantastic. 
I mean, that time of year, February, I definitely wouldn't want to be trying to camp out here. That would be a desperation move, camping out on the path in February, I think. Not my cup of tea at all. I mean, I'd try it if I had to, but it would be very uncomfortable. You wouldn't sleep well. Just the cold waking you up all the time. You'd probably have to carry extra blankets and jumpers and stuff as well. Ah, so yeah, there it is. Looks like I've been beaten to the finish already. Mind you, I do wonder if he's done the whole thing. He probably, his last episode probably will be the last stretch. Probably his first episode probably was the first one. I'll have to go and catch up on the first episode, see what that was like. But yeah, good stuff. Although, you know, I do question the remit somewhat. He, at one point he went to Bob in Moor, which is 10 miles inland. But then again, I respect his my holiday, my rules approach. I do the same. So yeah, I recommend that if you find it. Okay, let's crack on. He's probably, <laughs> you learn more about the path than you will watching this stuff, I'll tell you. All right, on we go. Get away from the edge of the cliff. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go again. Burton Hive Beach, apparently. Can see why. Let's listen to that. It's soothing. I don't know if you can hear it actually. <laughs> Hopefully I'm quite soothing too. So yeah, so this is essentially the, the beach we're going to be following for the next, well, we went down the cliff, uh, for the next couple of days really, certainly the rest of today. So that basically, once we get down off this hill, we're onto the beach line and we're going to be following that more or less to the end of today, to the Abbotsbury Beach Car Park. It's about 30 miles of continuous shoreline and yeah, there is actually sand right on the edge, although you're going to need your flip-flops to get to it. It's very pebbly. The beach fishing going on there. It's very popular with beach fishers actually, this whole long bay. Apparently it's good conditions for some type of fish or another. I remember coming here with my dad when in my teens, spending a night on the beach, night fishing, beach fishing around Chesil Beach sort of way. Didn't catch a thing. <laughs> it was hilarious. But yeah, a lot of people who do know what they're doing do well here with the old rods. Got popular. I think. I think. So yeah, just going to keep on keeping on. Just enjoying this glorious day. I haven't seen any adders either. I did sort of have a couple of goes of stopping and being silent and studying the, the, uh, the long grass. Not because I'm afraid of them particularly. I think it would be fascinating to see one. Adders generally only bite in self-defence. There's a sort of last desperation panic move, apparently. You know, if they're they're being harassed by, a, by an off-the-lead Yorkshire Terrier or something, then yeah, it's going to come to grief, but they're keeping themselves. They're a species evolved to hunt, you know, voles, mice and rats, creatures of that size, not, you know, six foot two hikers who are stomping along. Usually they just want to try and get out of the way in that case. But, but no, they are quite elusive because, of, because, very, because very much that, they'd rather hide than fight. I don't know, I'll keep my eyes open. If I see one, I'll film it for you, certainly. But uh, yeah, I think that the adder is probably the single only dangerous creature in the British Isles in terms of bitey poison time stings and whatnot I mean yeah people get anaphylactic shot from bee stings and stuff but that's them not bees in general but yeah I don't even know if adder, adder bites are necessarily fatal I know they're quite serious certainly they probably could kill but kill a man but uh, you almost never hear about that kind of thing in the news so. I mean they're basically on the edge of extinction in this country so protected species, you know, legal protections and so on. You're not really meant to harass them, even if you do see one, so. Yeah, they could be in here somewhere in these dunes. Basking in the sun, cold-blooded. They need the sunlight to keep moving, keep, keep active. But yeah, I guess I probably won't see one, to be honest, but, but that's okay. <laughs> right, let's, let's get down to the beach, work out where next. Yeah, here we are, on the beach, practically. And it's basically five more miles of this, just undulating dunes. There's a lot of beach rods on there. Yeah, I wasn't wrong about the fishing. Most of those little tent-like structures are fishermen. Here for the day. Set the rod up on a tripod. I mean, that's lazy, isn't it? Not even, not even holding the rod. <laughs> Low expectation of a bite, I imagine. You sit down with a crossword and a thermos of coffee or whatever. Work on the tan, put the, put the cricket on the radio, whatever. <laughs> Not suggesting it's an old man's hobby, but... 
Yeah, it's good. I wonder if they eat what they catch. Do I throw it back? Absolutely magnificent. I would totally recommend this stretch if anyone just wants to do a single day to get a feel for it. I mean, if you like beaches, this is this stretch here and probably Penhale Sands on the north coast, Cornwall. You remember that stretch where I had about 10 miles of beach I was walking along and I kept getting buzzed by dune bikes. Lifeguards on quad bikes. That's over on the north, just north of New Quay, I think. But this is a different kind of thing. And yeah, lovely, a day like this. There's a bit of cloud coming in, I think it'll get a bit overcast later. But this is absolutely perfect at the moment. It's enough breeze to keep, stop you dying of heat stroke, and, but still enough to be magical, if I wasn't talking over it all. That's the uh, main coast road on there, cut the bus along there earlier today. Ooh, pillbox, an old World War II Coastal defence, yeah. Observation mostly, I imagine. Sentries rather than any kind of heavy ordnance, I'd imagine. The heavy ordnance tends to be saved for the headlands and ports. <sighs> All right, I'm just going to meander for the next hour or so. I may talk to you, I may not. I don't know what sort of mood I'm in. <laughs> huh, I was just getting into that. <laughs> now I've been inland detoured. Oh well, it's not that far inland. Yeah, that looks it's like a fen or a salt marsh of some sort. Extremely deep, thick salt grass, I suppose. Don't know, it might be fresh here on this side of the bar. Who knows? I don't. I bet, more, I bet Michael Portillo knows. But yeah, interesting your ecology on the very, on the foreshore there. Just slowly pan along there. And the usual sort of stuff, tough grass and dune grass and that sort of thing. But you get this weird sort of bluish kale-like stuff growing all along the top of that. I can just see some of that there. And it looks like the stuff they plant in fields, you know, agriculturally. Kale, you know, cattle feed or whatever, but there's no fields, there's no actual there's no arable fields nearby. They just slowly pan around. It's all grass and grazing, pasture stuff. I'm not sure where it would have come from, blown quite far out from inland, I suppose, but, but the conditions on I mean, it is down the other side of that gravel bank in the sea. And in high seas, particular storms will bring waves over the top of that. And it's all entirely gravel under there. So I don't think it is kale, I think it's something else. I've got a vague idea samphire grows in that kind of conditions, but I'm not sure I saw any. That's quite distinctive, sort of tubular succulent leaves almost fronds tastes quite nice good with sea bass so yeah let's carry on then just take go wherever the acorns take me basically i'm very easy on this <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to do if i finish the coast path because it's unlikely any other long distance path is going to be quite so well maintained and laid out and signposted and so obvious to follow as well you know <laughs> keep the sea on your right hand side so, yeah, I'll have to start actually looking at maps and doing proper navigation. Ooh, it's lovely here, though. It's, it's, a, it's a bit stiller inland. I think the breeze must be coming from that kind of way. I don't know. There's not much of it, wherever it's coming from. It's about ten past one. So, uh, yeah, burning sky got angry. But I'm all right. I've got my hat. Keep at it. <sighs> Still in landing, but uh, not very, because I mean, that's the edge of the beach just there. <laughs> in fact, I think I'd prefer this because, like I say, it's. Um, go, okay, acorn. That's some quite deep gravel there, and for, for a while I was walking along the beach and it was getting quite, uh, quite wearing on the thighs. It sort of sink in quite a bit push against to get some grip, whereas this is all your usual footpath compacted mud style stuff that I'm used to, making some good time, which, you know, I don't know why, <laughs> don't know why I'm doing that. What's going on over there, distant hillside? Coloured colours. Camping or something more adventurous? Paragliding maybe. Parasailing, paramotoring, whichever the one is where you sit on the little buggy with the big 
big fan on your back. So now you'll have to keep an eye out and keep your posters. Perfect conditions for it, I'd say. Good thermals, not much crosswind at all. Yeah, maybe they're setting up to take off. So now I'll show you if they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit sheltered along here, so not much, not much breeze. Yeah, this is that kale stuff I was talking about. I might just get a zoom on it for further go away and do my homework research. Yeah, that's the stuff. I often see that in fields around spring and wind, yeah, springtime. Sheep being allowed to graze on it. Not dissimilar to sugar beet, but I don't know if it's got a bulb underground. More like kale, but is it a wild sea kale? Don't know. Sort of thing, sort of thing people put in smoothies <laughs> to improve their, their inner cheese or what have It's that C H I, not C H E E S E. I have inner cheese quite often. I put it there. Yeah, I don't see any action on that field. It looks like long things laid out on the. I think that is parasails. I think that is parachutes being laid down, untangled and whatnot. We'll have to wait and see. Yep, there it is. It hasn't got very far. <laughs> I don't think it's enough wind to get up with. It's just too still. He's sort of doing a low level pass on the <laughs> field he took off from, but I don't think he's going to get much altitude off of that. It's all a bit still. Yeah, he's down again. Oh well, fair play for trying. <sighs> yeah. Back on the beach again. Ah, oh, yeah, this is hard going. It's a mile, to, um, one mile to West Bexington, which is that there over there. Zoom a bit. Uh, I might try and get a drink on the ice cream. <sighs> Heat's starting to take its toll a little. I've got water, of course, but nice to not have to use your own supplies if you can find alternatives. <sighs> oh, this is the way to enjoy a beach, though. Look at that. A pretext and absolutely no one else for hundreds of metres in any direction. <laughs> Put a little radio in there, got some beers, a little cool box, yeah. I don't know so I could deal with the inactivity though for that length of time as, as, as uh, regular viewers may know. I can barely make myself sit for half an hour. <laughs> yeah, look, this is this weird sea chaos stuff, it's sort of grows on the lee side, so it needs a little shelter, but nothing grows at all on the on the on that side. But, you know, with a bit of slight bit of shelter from the sea and the spray, you get all sorts of stuff growing. I don't know what any of these things are called. I'm a terrible guide, but that's okay. Little burnt patches here and there. People come up here for bonfires at night. Which must be quite cool too. <laughs> Figuratively and literally. It's quite a sight in winter. I mean, generally, it's quite a mild coast. This is the English Channel, of course. It's generally very mild. It's quite unusual we'd get any kind of severe high season along this coast. But it happens, it happens. It gets people sometimes. The Atlantic coasts, your more furious kind of bashing. The north coast of Cornwall, primarily. But yeah, the Channel and the North Sea as well. The North Sea is relatively mild compared to the, the great oceans. Still, North Sea is not something I think I have to deal with. It's a long way away from here, that is. <sighs> Splendid. And the holiday park there, there's a lot of these car static caravan sites along this bit of the coastline, all the way back from Exmouth and beyond. Seen these clustered in pretty much every other valley. Very popular. <laughs> now more so than ever, I suppose. Staycationing. Uh, but then I, uh, even before COVID, lots of people just like holidaying in the same country. I don't like, you know, air travel and airports and trying to understand foreign languages and whatnot. Yeah, they've been abortively launching here and there. It's a bugger as well, because they start up at the top where that white and red one is, and they manage to get down to the bottom, and they have to bag it all up and carry it to the top for another go. It's just, the wind's really not helping them today, I don't think. Yeah, 
Oh, look, flies here. I'm gonna move on, being eaten. I don't think I have to worry about adders. I mean, they sound like a steam train at the moment. I think it's going to surprise any flora or fauna. Oh, God. Ah, oh, this is hard work. Oh, wow, look at that. One of them made it. Oh, it's a motor, I can hear it. He must have started on the beach. I can't get high enough to see over the top. Quickly enough. He must be skimming right on the water. How unusual. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, paramotor, see? Big ass turbine blade fan thing on his back. Petrol driven or something. Probably quite a lot of shock absorbing between that and his back. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty noisy, I expect. That's the way to fly though. <sighs> Mind if I just stand still for a bit? Oh, so we've, I think this is West Bexington. Whatever that is. It's a car park, certainly. It's not my car park. I mean, I think I've got another two miles or so. And this is really hard work. It's feeling a lot like, um, well, it's feeling how I imagine strapping weights around my ankles would be. Look out, I'm being buzzed. <laughs> considerate of him to go around me. Don't expect to be strafed on top of all my other problems. As I was saying, yes, uh, I don't know, I was picturing about how difficult walking is, but that all puts it in perspective really, isn't it? There he goes. Yeah, I was right about the noise though. Oh, right, I've got to try and find an ice cream or an overpriced can of lilt or something, and then carry on. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Solid. Oh. Time for a break. <laughs> Four miles to go. I <sighs> hope it's not all like this. <laughs> Oh, this is if it's a bit more compact all of a sudden. Might be near the edge. I'll try and walk without rhythm, I think that's the key. Oh, God. All right, keep at it. Oh, what's that breeze look? Right near the shore. Seems to have settled down a bit now. Looks like we're on a proper actual footpath again. So they're just like slogging through the gravel. My, th my thighs can really feel it. It's like that, that gravelly stuff, it really makes you work hard. A lot of wasted effort as you're pushing forward. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm quite heavy or I'm land, putting my feet the wrong way onto it first, like heel first when you should be going ball first or something. No. I'm just glad I haven't got my, my big old hiking, camping backpack on. It's another 15 kilos. <laughs> should be sinking into that gravel. Very hard. I don't know where I'd be along here. This would be the. I'd have started on the usual Saturday over at Seaton. This would probably be a Tuesday, I suppose. Yeah. Still, here I am. And it's lovely now that the path is behaving. Good. Oh, just can't get over these views. This house in the middle of nowhere here. See this the way back to Lyme Regis and beyond. I don't even know if you can make out Exmouth from here, possibly. There's stuff in the very far distance is the other side of the X. Right, so I'm looking at it really at maximum zoom. And then you got this 
this incredible sweep of beach just running all the way along and then all the way up there into the distance and there's the Isle of Portland you start to resolve some of the little villages on there now I forget what that's precisely what they're called but yeah Portland Island it will take it's, it's a 10 mile circumference it's a day trip to get around it 10 plus miles right to get all the way around and back again which I shall be doing at some point and it's big enough to support several villages scattered across its surface it'll be interesting when we get there I have no idea where I left the car to be honest I'm just going to keep walking until I see it I did leave it literally on the path this time <laughs> there's a parking space right where the uh, coast path just comes off into the car park oh, I'll have that <laughs> I'm going to walk directly to my car and I'm just tromping two miles inland to find the village car park that'll be good mm, more stone balancing Oh, I love that. Tiny, futile gesture that rails against the chaos that is the inevitable certainty of our universe. Everything, everything falls off in the end, but some of us like to put things on top of other things. Uh, uh, rambling and rambling. <laughs> God, that, that trudging across that stone stuff really shagged me out, to be honest. My thighs are aching a lot more than usual. It's quite hard going. I think this is on balance why I prefer a cliff top path to a beach path any day. So this is a nice road now for servicing that, these cottages here. So I'm going to just stroll along some tarmac for a bit now, which is nice. Little reward. About half two in the afternoon. Well, I'll be done by four probably. That'll give me a nice chance to get home without worrying about traffic and so on. Ooh, good. So, what have we got? What have we got? That looks familiar. Hey, there it is. That blue roof of my car there. Pretty much where I left it. God, oh, it's going to be really hot. I haven't got one of them like foil sunshades or anything that's been there all day. <laughs> all the windows open on the way home, I think. Splendid. So, what's that? About, it's just about three o'clock. It's uh, 11 30. Yeah, three and a half hours. Hardly worth a day's filming, is it, really? I used to hike more than this. <laughs> I used to do 15, 16 miles a day, 18 sometimes. Oh, 10, 10 miles if, if, if that, to be honest. Still, it is what it is. I don't mind. Say, so, my holiday, my rules. So yes, good. So this is the car park at Abbotsbury Beach, just through that hedge at the end there. You can see some of the, the toilet block there in the car park, just in the end. Marking the end of another day. Excellent. So before I just get in the car and go home, I think I might uh, let's, let's trump up the uh, up the beach. One last trudge through the gravel. See what we can see. Get some idea of what we're going to be doing next time, which may be as soon as next week. I haven't got a lot on. Depends on the weather. I mean, if it's absolutely foul, then I'm just not going to bother. But no point subjecting myself to torrential rain and storms just for the sake of it. Yeah, so that talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> it's taking rather longer than I thought. Ooh. Big old thing, Chesil Beach, and accompanying sandbar. We're coming up on it. There's some brick foundation there. That a bit of World War II analia. Possibly. Not a bit about. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, a lot of fishing rods and tents. Nearby car park, see? Ah. Right, so basically, big old car park there. Oh, which one of my cars, one of those cars is mine. So beyond the other side of that, the coast path actually forks off left over that hill uh, and goes inland. So you can just sort of see the lagoon there. So this is Chesil Beach proper, where the lagoon meets the sea. You end up with an eight mile long sandbar, well, gravel bar. It's basically this for eight miles. We have nothing particular 
on it. No gift shops, no cafes, no bits of path or anything. It's just gravel for eight miles. Given how much trouble the few, few half mile bits of it I've been doing today have been causing me. I'm rather glad the coast path actually goes along the inside and up those hills, I think. So there's gonna be a bit more hill next time. But yeah, it goes along the inland. There's a swannery, apparently. Is that like where they farm swans? I don't know. And then eventually we get to rejoins the beach at the far end of the Chesil of Chesil Beach, the, the bar, just about where that hill meets that southern uptick in the centre there. That is Ferry Bridge, where the city of Weymouth, which is just over that far hill, meets Portland. And Ferry Bridge will be the end of my next day. So I'll start here again. Basically, I'll park up at Ferry Bridge, get a bus to the village up inland, and then come back down to here and carry on. <sighs> and yeah. So that'll be another 10 mile stretch. I'm doing small stretches because of travel and stuff and that's fine, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. Oh, look at these people. It's like a small town of fisher folk made of nylon, polyester. Stretched along the strand. Strand, that's a good word. I think it might be a strand. I'm not sure technically what a strand is in, as, as pertaining to beaches and such like. <sighs> good, good, good. Yeah. So yeah, so next next weekend maybe, or weekend after that, some weekend soon, definitely September time still. Um, it'll be all along the inline edge of that lagoon up to the very end where the uh, where Portland starts. And then there'll be one after that, so going around there to the end to Portland Bill and the lighthouse and then back to the, back to the Ferry Bridge car park again. Big circular loop day that'll be, that'll be another one. And then beyond, and we pass through Weymouth, which you can't see. And then on to the last part of the Jurassic Coast. This is all still the Jurassic Coast, although this part here is not great for fossils, it must be said. You need cliffs really, and large shattered ejector to, to get fossils generally. I mean some of these small pebbles might have fossils in, but much easier to see if they're massive. Um, yeah, so on the other side of Weymouth, we're onto a, big, a much more sweeping up and down rugged coast again. And then that goes around the end at Swanage, Dareliston Country Park and so on. And then cuts inland up to Pool Harbour and then we're done. Exciting times. But yes, as I previously indicated, it's probably another six trips or so, given the, the slow rate I'm doing at the moment. Slow in terms of distance, not in terms of calendar years and months and time. Actually, doing doing one a weekend regularly is probably going to get me there quicker than doing two single weeks in a year. So, and yeah, as I said, that means I get to see what winter's like on the coast path, which should be nice. Without, yeah, in, in a sort of low stakes way, without you know dying in a blizzard or anything. But it's been lovely today. Really nice. I mean, yeah. It, it, Bit of hard going here and there on this gravel stuff, but apart from that, really sort of low intensity. There's not been massive succession of cliffs or anything. It's been a beautiful day. There's been ice creams and drinks when I've needed them, but not so many that I haven't, I haven't had to go through any awful crowded beach towns or anything like that. So that's been nice. West Bay was a bit busy, but I left there straight away. So yeah, it's a nice part of the world. Quite understated. Quite quite calm. Quite mellow. Not dramatic. There's no. No grand, grand things to see here, but the whole place is just nice, you know. And that's the impression I'm picking up anyway. But we get to see a lot more of it in a Sunday's time or two. So join me then, I guess. Until then, uh, see you later. <laughs>